this medium. I want to uh, share with you uh, what uh, Miles said a few minutes ago, but I'm actually going to use my laptop as a visual aid here. So uh, again, as Miles mentioned, this doesn't necessarily apply if you're on a desktop. Let me get my computer really close so you can see. Um, but if you're on a laptop, it's uh, or a sorry, it doesn't apply if you're on a phone. But on a laptop or a desktop, you should be able to adjust uh, the size of your screen. So as I move my mouse and my cursor over this space in between the two windows, one that has the bulletin and one that has uh, me actually my computer right now, there's a little line that pops up. And if I click on that line and I hold it and I drag it while pressing down on my mouse, a little coordination with one hand, I can make uh, this as big as I want. So you can have the bulletin be a size that works for you to read and uh, the visual a size that works for you as well. So we'll begin our morning prayer service this morning. We're using uh, morning prayer right to, which is a staple of our Episcopal worship before the 1979 prayer book came in. Many of you will remember morning prayer every single Sunday, and we're doing it again. So I'll invite you to join in your bulletin. Everything that you need to participate in worship is going to be right there on the screen in front of you or in a bulletin if you're able to download one from our, our website or Facebook page. Um, there are our suggestions in there if you want to do your Episcopal calisthenics this morning and sit, stand, kneel, uh, but you're welcome to, to be in whatever position is comfortable for you this morning for worship. The hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us be in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now David will lead us in the invitatory and the psalm. Good morning. Once again, we're going to chant the, the psalm. We're also going to chant the antiphons before and after. Um, 
we will just make the first one a continuation or the a predecessor to the first verse and the last one in addition to the last verse. So I'm going to chant them uh, with the first verse and then start over and ask you to join me. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. All right, now we're going to chant Psalm 130 with a slightly different hymn tune. And again, the, the part in bold at the bottom, we will just sing as if it's an additional verse. So I will chant the first verse and then start over from the beginning and you may chant or speak as you prefer. Out of the depths I have called to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. Out of the depths I have, have I called to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your, let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore, you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchman for the morning. More than watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and you will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, 
prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we're now just waiting for Richard and David to get into place. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and God. I walk by the quiet waters of life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into war. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. Lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my Beyond my fears, from death into war. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. For slaughter can stop my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into love. You have set me a banquet of love, in the face of hatred. Bearing me with love beyond my pride. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. And mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house. 
reading from John. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died.
when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus, look, Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried, cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the one holy and living God, Amen. Matter matters. I don't think that I've ever been uh, more aware of um, how important this, the physical nature of human life is. You see, we, we are physical embodied beings and we need to touch each other. We need to be in one another's physical presence. We need to feed one another and be fed. We need to care for one another and be cared for physically. And at this time of uh, social distancing in the face of the coronavirus pandemic, we're being asked to, to care for one another, to care for our whole society and those most vulnerable um, by not being in one another's physical presence, right? And so we, uh, we have learned our, our, um, our learning curve has just been tremendous over the last week, I think for all of us in terms of learning how to access technology and, and be together in, in virtual ways. And we are making it work and we're trying our best and we're doing really, really well. And yet we know somehow we know that it's not the same. We know that this is not what we were made for. Matter matters. We are physical embodied beings and we have a physical embodied God. Jesus is God with skin on, God's love, which took human form and lived in this human physical limited reality with us. And it's because of this that we have a, an embodied hope. We are embodied beings with an embodied God and an embodied hope. And just as I've been aware of, of how important a physical presence is, when I, when I see another human being, uh, I get really excited, even though they're more than six feet away, right? I've also been, been more aware over the last couple of weeks than I ever have been of the incarnational embodied nature of our faith. And I want to tell you a story that um, 
explains the decision that I've made about, about Eucharist uh, during this time of, of physical separation. Uh, I know different churches and different clergy have made different decisions about that, but I want you to understand where I'm coming from. When I was 20 years old, um, I went to El Salvador for the first time, and this was my, my first time outside of the country, outside of the United States, well, outside of uh, the, the developed world. And um, I went to El Salvador and then was connected with the Episcopal Church of El Salvador there. And I traveled around the country and visited with different priests for about a month. And I had the opportunity to uh, help lead a worship service, participate in a worship service in what was essentially a prison for children uh, with a, a priest who um, wasn't the most socially in tune person I've ever met, didn't have a lot of empathy, had some of his own issues and baggage. So he and I went to this, this children's prison. It was a place where, you know, children might have been a sort of juvenile hall for people, children with minor crimes, but a lot of them, I think the majority had just been dropped off there because their parents couldn't care for them. And there were kids from five or six years old all the way up to, to young adolescents. So he, we were packed into this room with, with about 80 kids and he celebrated Eucharist. Um, received communion himself, gave communion to the musicians that we'd brought with us from a local congregation and then concluded the service. I was sitting off on the floor and didn't receive communion. Neither did any of the children. And after the service was over, one um, brave girl who was 12 or 13 stuck her hand up and she said, why didn't we get communion? She was, she, she was, uh, empowered with her anger. She, she knew that something wasn't right here. And the priest said, oh, well, uh, well, I, I haven't had a chance to check all of your communion certificates and your confirmation certificates. And I thought, this is the greatest um, violation of the sacrament that I could imagine. Right? Here we are in a room full of children who are spiritually starving, who are starving for love, and we celebrate the feast of God's love, and we don't give them anything. How is that possible? You know, as a, as a priest, I could celebrate Eucharist here in my home with my family. Uh, I could be celebrating it in the church and communing just a few around the altar. Um, and I know clergy that are doing that. But I have to tell you that for me, uh, receiving myself, when we as the body of Christ cannot receive together, it's just something not right about that for me. I know that as I hunger and long for your physical presence, as I hunger and long for the real presence of Christ uh, in the Eucharist, in, in Jesus' body and blood that we take into our own bodies becomes a part of our cells, of our DNA, week by week by week. I'm hungry for that now, as I know you are. And we, we're, we're fasting, friends. We're fasting together for however long it takes, however long it takes for our society, our world to be well again. We are fasting. And when people fast, um, they fast for a purpose. Sometimes people fast for physical health, but fasting has a, a long spiritual tradition. When people fast, abstain from food or drink, a particular food or drink or, or anything really, in, in order to, to, to find something else, to find something deeper. And if we are fasting from these elements that are so essential to our lives, right? Our, we know that physical touch and interaction is essential to us psychologically and emotionally as well as, as spiritually and, and even physically. And we know that uh, receiving Eucharist, communion, with union, communion together, right, is essential to us spiritually. If we're, if we're fasting from these good, and, and, and precious and wonderful things. I can't even imagine what deeper good it is 
that there is for us in that. Sophia Calvaletti, uh, the founder of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, which is our children's formation program, said that our joy is in proportion to our longing. And our longing is being awakened now, our longing for one another, our longing to know God again in our sacred space together, our longing to break the body and bread and blood of Christ and share that together. And as great as our longing is, so great will be also our joy. Now, there's so much that, that touches on an embodied God, an embodied faith, an embodied hope in the gospel reading for today. It is, it is really rich, and I hope that you'll spend some time with it this week. I hope that you'll uh, read what others have written and, and hear what others have preached about this text. But what I want to lift up um, this morning is this, is it, it would be easy to misread this gospel and to think that it's telling us that somehow God causes suffering for a purpose. And Jesus uh, doesn't go right away to Lazarus and says, you know, this, this illness is for God's glory it's so that you may believe. I think that can easily play into thinking that somehow, you know, this is all part of God's purpose and God's plan. And, and that's okay as far as it goes, right? I know people of great faith who, who, who use those words. But I, I don't use those words. And again, I'm going to tell you why. Because I've been in the rooms with parents whose children have died. And I can't honestly look at them and tell them, God wanted this to happen. This is part of God's plan. God has a purpose here. I, I can't tell them that. But what I do know and what I've experienced and what I can tell them is that God is there. God is there. God is there and God's heart is breaking with them and God's guts are being wrenched open with them and God grieves with them. We see that in today's gospel reading. They say the shortest sentence of scripture is Jesus wept. Jesus weeps with Martha, with Mary, Jesus weeps with all of those gathered who know that, that this is not what we were made for, right? Who know that there is something in us that reaches out for the eternal, that isn't, that isn't made for decay, that isn't made for separation, that isn't made for sickness and suffering. There is something in us that is made for life and for beauty and for love and yes, for joy. And the other thing that our gospel shares with us is that even though God doesn't cause suffering for a purpose, and God is with us in our suffering, God is also in the life out of death business. And so we can hope, we can expect, we can look for the signs, we can name those signs of the ways that God is already bringing good out of this difficult circumstance that we find ourselves in. It, it's hard right now. And God is bringing good. God is bringing good for our souls. God is bringing good for our planet. God is bringing good for our society. God is bringing good for our relationships. God is bringing life out of this and every kind of death. And the promise that Jesus gives Martha when she says, yes, Lord, I know, you know, I know that, that someday you, you will make things right. right. Someday there will be resurrection. Someday there will be that life. And Jesus says, no, it's right here, right? It's right now. Right now is the eternal life that I have for you. Right in the midst of this suffering, in the midst of this pain, in the midst of this difficulty, in the midst of these things that you do not understand. I am the resurrection and the life and you don't have to understand it. 
All you have to do is believe, which means to the love, to lean into that relationship, to put your trust in me. And in the midst of death, you will find life. Life that is deeper and truer than anything that can come to us through the outside world. Life that can never be taken away. I'm grateful to Reverend Wendy for sharing this book with me. Uh, it's a book called Journeying with Transcendence, the Gospel of John through a Jungian perspective. Here it is. And the author, we're gonna call him Father McGann because I can't pronounce his first name, uh, has this to say, reflecting on the story of Lazarus and what it has to say to him about his own death. He says, the only way I can meet my death is by acknowledging that it will come and that it already has in the limitations that entomb me. To accept limitations and yet to see them as not limiting is perhaps to experience death and yet to discover within death that life is present. Perhaps Eliot was right in saying, I have seen birth and death, but thought that they were different. Maybe they really aren't. Perhaps they are only two faces of a single event and that death is that event viewed from the point of view of its limitations, while birth is that is viewed from the point of view of its possibilities. And then he says, or is it just that I need to make tombs into wombs? This tomb, it's a womb. Death is not the end of the story. And we're not going to death, but through death. And even now, even now, maybe especially now, God is present, giving us more life than we could ever imagine. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my fears, beyond my wants, from death into life. I've said these things to you in the name of our friend and savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now, David and Richard are gonna share with us a piece of music that um, talks about the fact that we are all one body together.
share in saying the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. I invite you to pray uh, holding hands physically or spiritually as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. That among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. For Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God Almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us by your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. But in all we do, direct us the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Jennifer will lead us in the prayers of the people. <clears throat> our response to each prayer is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To our Lord God, who welcomes all peoples with love, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and those in need saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer our prayers for the church worldwide and for our community of grace, for Michael and Megan, our bishops, Amy, Anne, Wendy, our priests, Deacon Susan, and all who are called to serve your people, we ask your blessing and strength, especially at this time in our world, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of compassion, for all those who are suffering with this virus, May they feel the power and comfort of your healing grace, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, and all caregivers, we pray for their protection from this virus. For all those who work tirelessly to develop medicines to curb and prevent this virus, we ask your guidance to find medical solutions, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this very crucial time, we ask your guidance, Lord God, for President Trump, and those in authority to address and provide for the urgent needs of necessary materials and provisions for the care and wellness of all those suffering this deadly virus, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In times of uncertainty, Lord, May we remember that you, you are our God of love, hope, and faith, and will never leave us or forsake us. We bring before you those who are dear to us and in need in body, mind, or spirit. For Ethan, Douglas, Gwyn, Jillian, Linda, Jack, Cole, Cleora, Jan, Craig, Julia, and all who are suffering from the virus. Who is on your heart?
May they feel the comfort of your healing presence, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your love, dear Lord, reaches beyond this life to the next. We remember those we love who we no longer see. We pray your comfort, comfort upon the grieving families of those in the world who have lost loved ones to the virus. Who is on your heart? May they be in perfect peace with you, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, open our eyes to see your hand of grace in the beauty of the world and the people around us. May each moment become an offering of love and gratitude to you. Please accept all these prayers in the name, in the holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Please join in the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forevermore. Amen. Well, thank you once again, everyone, for joining in uh, virtual church this morning. Um, I, my favorite part is the next part when I get to see all of you uh, and everybody's faces popped up on the screen for Zoom coffee hour. I just felt like, wow, they're really, really there. And it was so wonderful. So I hope you can stay. Uh, if you do stick around on the Zoom call over the next few minutes, you'll be uh, promoted to being able to talk and uh, and see and hear each other and uh, it's just really wonderful so we can even say just for a few minutes it's just great to see all of those faces on the screen uh, today at noon we have pilgrimage through holy week our very last of the sessions that we've been doing through lent talking about each of the services of holy week in turn and the service that we'll be talking about uh, today is is perhaps the most uh little, least known and um to me, probably the most special service of Holy Week. We'll be talking about the great vigil of Easter, that time on Saturday night when we, or sometimes early Sunday morning people do it. It's a time of watching and waiting for the resurrection. And um, it's a just really dramatic service that begins in darkness and fire and candlelight and chant and the waters of baptism and leads into a glorious uh, proclamation of the resurrection. So I hope you'll be able to, to uh, join on at Zoom at noon, noon today. Um, and the link for that was in the email that you should have received yesterday morning. If you're not getting uh, our emails, please, please let us know. Email uh, office at grace-episcopal.org and, and let David know that you'd like to be added to that email list. Um, and because there's lots of good things uh, coming through right now. Um, speaking of good things, our YouTube channel has some of the wonderful recent talks that we've had on it. And if it's not there yet, it will be soon. Um, Dr. Susan Shea shared an incredible talk with us last week about Julian of Norwich. And she is truly a saint for our times. Um, the talk was really wonderful, so I commend that to you. Um, Holy Week is coming, friends. Uh, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. 
and uh, we'll be we'll be worshiping in in a, in a pretty different way this year. Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, we'll be streaming services at nine o'clock, just like we have uh, for the last couple of Sundays. But the services of what we call the Great Three Days, or in Latin, the Triduum of Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday, the Easter Vigil, we're going to be providing some really special resources for those who wish to uh, celebrate these services in the home. You know, the early Christians, the first Christians, um, were they were house churches. Uh, they met in one another's homes, um, and uh, even the the Last Supper, the Passover, was celebrated in the home. So. We stand in a really long tradition when we when we offer these services ourselves and in our homes, and um, there's going to be some really really terrific ways to do that. I'm so excited to share with you this week. We're going to be producing a teaser trailer of a, a series of short videos that our own filmmaker Brian Kipner is producing on uh, the services of Holy Week. Just incredibly inspiring and beautiful, and uh, images and, and reflections from our our sanctuary itself. Films before the uh, before the stay-at-home order went into effect. And then there'll be a, a service booklet that you can follow along with um, at home as well and, and do as much or as little of those uh, services, the readings and, and, and the rituals and the prayers yourself at home uh, that, you, that you wish. We're calling it a choose your own Holy Week adventure. Um, but there'll be a lot to engage with uh, for families, uh, for those who live alone. There's a, a whole spectrum of, of things to, to take part in during those days. And as you do that, we're hoping that you'll take pictures of uh, what it is that you're doing at home and maybe a, a short video and, and either post that to our Facebook or share it with us, how, you, how it is that you're praying at home. This is a wonderful way for us all to stay connected. So um, do it right now. If you've got a, 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 a phone that you're on that you can take a shot of yourself worshiping on the couch or whatever it is, um, send that in. It's just, I tough to tell you, it really warms my heart to see, to see everybody, right? Um, through these virtual means. Um, and the last thing I want to say is invite a friend to virtual church. Um, it's, it's, these are our high holy days. Um, people are seeking right now. People are spiritually hungry. Um, Governor Cuomo in uh, New York, when he uh, put the stay-at-home order into place in New York, he said, you know, we have to be physically separate and spiritually together. And he said, I'm not sure how to do that last thing. We know how to do that last thing, and we're doing it. Um, so all you need to do to invite somebody to virtual church is just forward them the email that we send out every Saturday that has our, our links. The link for Sunday morning worship is always the same, so you can find anyone and just share it with folks. Um, ask their permission to add them to our, our emailing list so they get all the wonderful resources um, that we're putting together. So thank you again for joining this morning, and we'll see you in virtual coffee hour. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for sticking around for church. Uh, as Amy said, I'm going to start in a minute or two uh, promoting people into uh, the portion of this meeting where you're able to see and or where you're able to talk and, and be heard uh, by other people and, and see and be seen. Uh, just a reminder that uh, to do that, I can make it possible for you to do it, but you're at, you have to turn on your own audio and, uh, and uh, camera settings yourself or we won't be able to see you. Um, so uh, I'll start moving people over and uh, be good to see you all in a couple minutes. Bye. I'm going to get some coffee. Okay. I like your t-shirt, Bev. That's pretty great. <laughs> Not 
Here we are. Well, but we're not on the video. Can you back up a little bit so we can see too? Can you see Bev's shirt? What she got on her shirt? Hi, Richard. Hi, David. <laughs> Richard and <laughs> I've got my coffee here. <clears throat> I'm enjoying on a way. lovely cup of coffee with chai spiced almond milk. Courtesy of David Moreland. Is that product placement? Uh, yeah, although I don't know where you can buy it. <laughs> We're selling it at farmers markets. Oh, <coughs> hi Joan. Hi Steve. Hi Jamie. Hey there. Hi, Joan. Hey. There we are. Hi, Joan. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, you can now turn on your video if you want to be seen. We would love to see you. That's my favorite part. Hi. Hi Sarah. Is Sarah see you there? Where <laughs> are you there? <clears throat> <laughs> There's Ken. Ken. There's Lois. <laughs> Jennifer and Jenna. <laughs> Hi, Fredrix. <laughs> hey, Mary Clark. <laughs> Hi, Jules. Hey. There's Chris and Lynn. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> Jules, I love your cat. Mentius in America. Michael. So where's your coffee, everybody? Hello. It's on its way. Where are oh, the yeah. donuts? Oh, yeah. I really miss the donuts. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, we need donuts. Uh, <laughs> I, told I, donuts. I told Norm Manzer that I would I would deliver a donut to him and spray it with a disinfectant first. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the he was on today. I don't know if he's here now. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Who was on? Norm. Oh, it's so good to see everybody. Hi. Hi, Amy. Amy, Hi. that was a wonderful sermon. That was gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you, dear. You can hear it. Yeah, where, where are you? That sermon. Beautiful. Hi, Rebecca. How are you down there? David, hello. Hello, Norm. Hi, hello. Hey, Rebecca. Yeah, nice to see you. Nice. It's the Mueller's. Oh my God, the Mueller's are here. Let's see the babies. Where are they? No one. No one. Oh my God. David Dozier, do you have your pajamas on? Uh, I yeah. just put a bathrobe on. <laughs> Feeling a little yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Really living. Fancy. Oh. <laughs> Oh no. Oh. Beautiful <laughs> baby. Yeah. Erica. Oh, Where's Erica? Where? You think he's pretty wonderful. Oh, there he is. There he is. Yeah. Oh, yep. Are you baby? 